Welcome to the latest video from the Watercolors Aquarium Gallery, brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Today we're going to be trying to solve one of those big debates in the hobby. We're going to be talking about Planet Aquarium substrates. Soil-based versus clay ba baked clay or clay-based substrates. That's one of those topics that people just have all kinds of really, really strong opinions <laughs> about. Yeah, I could talk about dirt all day. <laughs> But that's what we have Charles for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, this was a topic that I honestly didn't know a lot about. And so this was very enlightening for me. And I quickly learned, good Lord, is this complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so let's first quick talk about what a clay-based substrate is and some examples and what a soil-based substrate is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So clay-based substrates are usually either baked clay or I found some examples of uh, their broken up lava rock. Not oh, yeah. like lava right. rock like what we sell here, but like actual like lava flows that have right. hardened. Mm -hmm. That's break. what EcoComplete is, correct? Yes. Yeah. Right. I was kind of shocked to learn that. Right. But anyways, um, then the soil-based substrates, most of the ones that you'll find commercially are what they'll do, they produce those pellets, because what they do is they take soil and then bake it into a pellet. Okay, uh, so like, that would be soils like the famous Amazonia from ADA, Fluval Stratum, mm -hmm. yep. um, a num number of other companies. There's been a couple of Dennerly ones. ones and that yeah. kind of thing too. Aqua Vitro has the Humate. Yeah. Those are some of the soil based substrate examples. But it's simple enough to say any soil, mm -hmm. even topsoil, can be considered as a soil based substrate. It's just not quite as easy to use as some of the right. other ones. No, and I was actually kind of shocked by how hard it can be to work with like just dirt yeah because yeah um it can be a nightmare of like it can have a buttload of boatload sorry uh, <laughs> <laughs> of phosphate in it um which can present you some problems uh they're typically not uniform in composition right. which mm -hmm. is something that a lot of commercial soil-based substrates work really hard to be uniform like yeah. Yeah. yeah so why one versus the other uh it's complicated. <laughs> um, well, a lot of the big deals was, one of the things I was shocked to learn is that clay-based substrates actually have more in common with inert substrates like sand than they do with soil-based substrates. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, it has the advantage of they don't quote-unquote degrade over time, but the disadvantage is, is that clay is, it's great for rooting larger plants in, but it only has minerals, so I have like potassium, magnesium, iron here, and that's really it. Um, it does have the advantage that oh, it's a little bit larger, so a little bit more water, or you're going to have to use root tabs almost definitely, right? Um, depending on what you're growing, I guess. And it allows for a little bit more water exchange, but that may or may not be a good thing depending on what you're growing. Okay. Um, the soil-based substrates are really cool. The more I learned about it, the more impressed I was. So that pellet is specifically designed the way it is because it will break down over time. But it's designed to break down at about the rate that these roots will grow in and prevent compaction, mm -hmm. which is a right. really big deal <laughs> because compacted soils are the ones that produce hydrogen sulfides, anaerobic conditions, yeah, we talked about that in our nitrogen cycle video. Yeah, that really stinky smell. Yeah. So the pellet is designed to give your plants time to establish their roots to prevent that from happening in your system. In addition, the soil-based substrates will have all the same minerals that a clay-based one will, but then it'll have trace elements, it'll have organic compounds, depending on which one you get. You can get one that has peat and that'll add tannins to the water and kind of buffer it to be a little bit lower if that's your desire. So soil-based substrates allow for a lot more customization in your tank than I right. anticipated. Yeah. Right. If you want to go with a really deep substrate or if you're doing a really cool artistically inspired aquascape and you want that sloped background mm -hmm. to create that depth, if you're using a clay-based substrate, and you've got six inches in the back, you're gonna get anaerobic areas. Yeah. yeah. On a soil-based substrate, if you get those plants in there, those roots can prevent that. I, yeah, like I said, I went into this not knowing. 
Yeah, I don't, I'm a fish guy. I don't grow plants to grow plants, but this <laughs> He's was- He's branching out on this one. But this one was quite shocking to me, but also the soil-based substrates do offer a distinct advantage if you're growing like carpeting plants or stem plants. Absolutely. Because since this is an extra source of nutrition for the plant, it can help sustain right. that growth that those type of plants you want right. to have in your system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some pros and cons. So sure. pros of a clay-based substrate. Less expensive, a little easier to work with, not quite as messy. Mm -hmm. Allows for some customization of nutrients. A basic planted tank, this one right here has clay-based substrate in it, yeah. can do just fine with it. Yeah, but we do need to use root tabs in this tank right. to make up for some of yeah. those detractions. But I will caution anybody who's afraid of a little messiness, unless you're going with a fully planted tank. Yes. A soil-based substrate might not be entirely for you. They're messy to work with. They're going to cloud your tank a little bit when you stir them up. It's great because it's got like a texturing to it that actually roots have a pretty easy time latching on to, mm -hmm. which, depending on what you're growing, can be really advantageous. But I'm going to go back to, you mentioned sand. Yeah. That is not a planted aquarium substrate. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, sand is almost like the worst thing for plants. Like everything about it is wrong. It's both too small and too large for it to root mm -hmm. too well. It's a compaction nightmare. Um, roots, it's too light for the roots to like keep the plant down, mm -hmm. but it's like too heavy for the roots to really get in well. It, yeah. I just, that's a yeah. conversation that I never want to have again. It's interesting <laughs> that when you do set up a divided substrate and you see some of those plants that they, they, they just want to spread. Mm -hmm. And so they're growing in whatever your growing media of choice and be that clay-based or soil-based yeah. substrate but you can see them trying to push out into that sand and they just can't really do well in that yeah, sand. Yeah, you don't see like random plants pop up in your sand. They don't really want to be there at all. Right. You're not right. really growing plants in sand if you've got plants in it. You're more of like using sand to hold your plants down. <laughs> That's a good way to describe it, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I just wanted yeah. to talk about sand yeah. real quick. Sorry. I would argue <laughs> you're better off with pea gravel than sand. At least the roots can get through that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, but still not that nutritionally valuable. If you really want to do plants, one of these two, I think. Absolutely. Why yeah. go with anything else? For sure. <laughs> so the basic rundown of this one is yes, substrates for planted aquariums matter. Yes. It is important to use those for a planted aquarium. They do make a difference. There are pros and cons for both a clay-based substrate and a soil-based substrate. And honestly, it just comes down to, personally, what do you like better? I wouldn't set up a planted aquarium again without soil, probably at home. Yeah. But a lot of times I'm recommending other people use clay base because then they don't have to deal with the mess. It's almost like it's better for starting out. Like if it's yeah. your first planted aquarium, yeah. unless you know you're going to go all crazy, you just want to grow some plants, it's a really nice, easy way to get started in a planted aquarium. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'll never argue with that. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think? Give us some input out there on what you like to use for your planted aquarium. Did you have success or failures with soil, success or failures with clay? How did it go for you? Always look for more information on our podcasts. Yeah. We're gonna start that blog going soon, so check out the website for um, some in-depth conversation. Yeah, in the meantime, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, make sure to like this video, leave us a comment, and check out the Watercolors Aquarium Gallery podcast wherever you listen. And check out the Watercolors Aquarium Gallery. Come downtown and turn around and see us. <laughs> Anytime. Have lots of fun and keep those hands wet. I want to point out my cute little root tab though that I drew. <laughs> <laughs> you did draw a very nice root tab. Yeah, look at it. The whole yeah. drawing is adorable. <laughs> it's great. It's great. <laughs>